OK, we have a quorum. And so um, I will call to order the meeting of the Economic Development Commission, our regular monthly meeting, November 3rd. Um, the agenda is uh, basically uh, citizen comments. If you have any citizen comments that are not on the topics <coughs> that we're going to be talking about, uh, the initial comment period is a good time to do it. But we do take citizen comments throughout the discussion, assuming we have time. We usually do. Um, we have really no old business. The basic agenda is to simply go through our working groups and our initiatives. And so as a reminder to everyone, we're now we're structured around the five priorities that we set, which are how expanding workforce housing, marketing Woodstock, expanding childcare capacity, downtown physical rejuvenation, and supporting an existing and new events to grow. And our initiatives, three initiatives are the community grants, the grant writer program, and the storefront incentive. And there's a possibility we hope soon that we will introduce a fourth initiative, which is a business loan fund. But that is not yet. It's, it's conceptually supported by the EDC members, as we discussed in the last several meetings. But we have not yet finalized the details of that program. And approval depends on those details. So, so um, with that, I will ask if there are any, commu any what is the co community comments? That's not right. Citizen, Citizen comments, thank you. Are there any citizen comments? Yes, Susie. Um, hey, so let, about this time last year, you said you were going to engage the community on the whole tourist issue and stuff like that. How's that going? Yeah, we have, it hasn't gone at all. See, that's what happens when you don't come to the meetings. We forget about the priorities that you talked about. Um, Sorry, you're poor. I just left all the <laughs> Right, right. We, we, have not, we have not done that. And I'm just thinking, given the structure that we have, I think marketing, the marketing working group, given that the events working group is not really as active as the other four, I think actually that the marketing working group should should help with that. Patrick, it's... Um, John, it, so John I, I didn't hear, yeah, I didn't hear what was said. Sorry, okay, you know what, I'm going to push this here. If, um, these mics don't always work, but I'm pointing, you, you know what, since you're the only ones here, can you just come grab this and just put it on the, like the somewhere near you. Yeah. Um, the question was about a, probably a year ago, we agreed that we would convene the community to discuss the issue of, uh, you know, over or under population of tourists, basically. You know, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Or maybe it's not quite that black and white. But basically, what could be done to make the experience good for residents as well as tourists? And we haven't, and the question was, what, how is that going? And the answer is, we haven't done anything about it, really. I mean, we, you know, issue comes up informally, but not formally. So Patrick, maybe we can talk offline about, I, I know the marketing working group has a full plate, but, um, and I'm, I'm willing to help kind of organize a, a, a discussion. During the state of Sally McNeil, a female bodybuilder accused of. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that was. That was from my computer. Makes you happy, folks. I don't know why. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You know, we're going to strike. We're going to strike that for the record. If you're going to yeah. discuss that offline, I think I'd like to be part of it because I think it directly affects downtown businesses. Oh, oh absolutely. Well, I, no, I didn't mean. To, I just meant discuss the process. I mean, I think yeah, yeah, okay. what we've talked about okay. is, to, is to have a, convene a public meeting where we can get public input and comment on the question of are more visitors good or more visitors not good, but maybe more importantly, how can we what what steps, if any, can we take to make the imposition on residents okay. as, as you know as managed as possible okay. so Patrick is that something that the that the marketing I'm happy to work with you on, you know to sort of set that up I think I sort of envisioned something similar to the meeting we had you know three years ago when we had you know we invited people to simply come and, and we'll take some time to just listen to comments yeah well I, I think we should it's it's a it's a hard thing to quantify uh, so yeah, uh, we can talk about it, John, for yeah, sure. I, I'm not trying to solve it in this comment. I'm simply just setting up a process for doing it. We did say we would yeah. do it, and I think it's an important discussion. Beth? Go ahead, Beth. Yeah, she's just. I know, I, was, I had to unmute. Um, so my question is, I think the chamber should be involved in that discussion since we are actively recruiting and 
um, hosting visitors almost year round. And I, you know, I, I understand the question of the imposition, and we very much appreciate um, the locals um, welcoming people because it, it was, they were very generous this year. Um, but I do think it's part of the chamber's mission. I, I agree completely. Would you uh, would you like to either co-host it with the EDC or host it, and the EDC will promote it? You know, promote it along with you. I'd like to talk maybe with Patrick and you. Great. Offline. Okay, absolutely. As as active, yeah, that would be at a minimum. It should be a joint meeting, and if you want to kind of take the lead, that would be great. But if not, we'll great. we'll co co sponsor it. Okay. Any other comments? All right. Thanks, Susan. Okay. Oh, sorry, uh, Beth. Sorry. Go ahead. One, one more, because I think that listserv and. I've had people stop into the office in the last two days and talk about Halloween. I hope to put it somewhere. I'm just throwing it out there right now um, as the need for perhaps the EDC to, since it's a huge event, I mean, it's as big as many of our events um, that we discuss it at some point, not tonight, but at some point. What, what are you yeah, so if I can interpret, if I can just sort of uh, comment, I think that there was a, a comment in the listserv a couple of days ago about the possibility of having the EDC help to fund the, the, uh, the Halloween event, basically. There's a huge candy expense. You know, there were, I think there was probably between 1,000 and 1,500 people at that event, Absolutely. probably mostly local people, not 100%, I'm sure. And, um, and it's very expensive and, you know, time consuming. And um, so... So I think that that, that um, anyway, th thank you for raising that, Beth. I would suggest that whenever anyone is ready to bring that issue forward, um, and it could be an informal, it could be a chamber, you know, you and, and three residents of High Street or something, any kind of group that would like to bring it forward or person, then um, just come to the EDC, ask to be put on the agenda, and we'll, we can start that discussion. It is... The, ca uh, the town does, but my. Like, recently. Oh, sorry. I don't know. Uh, Charlie, Someone is. Mika, I think it might be in your house. It, it is. Yeah. So you light up when it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the town does provide candy, but I'm just inferring from the comment on the listserv that, that it doesn't satisfy the demand. So that seems like it fits into one of our five priorities. So I would encourage them, you know, anyone to come forward, Beth. Deborah? Thanks. But Deborah, go ahead. Yeah, this is, um, I was kind of waiting for uh, Mike to show up, but maybe he's not coming tonight. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, he did not, he, he usually, I don't know. Okay, uh, but uh, we'd like to be a part of that conversation because we had a meeting, uh, we, we had a conversation to try to talk about how best uh, to do um an events group through the EDC, since our job is not to like create events necessarily, it's to support. But some of the older events are, you know, you know, they, they're doing their own thing. We want to be able to uh, kind of look at a calendar and say, what can we do to support the events that already exist or look at the key moments of uh, impact to the town and create things that take care of traffic that give people to do when there are people coming to town, things like that, that could handle some of the issues that Suzanne brought up. So that if we're trying to create events or, or if we're trying to create something through the EDC, that maybe we do it based on a specific period of time and need based on um, uh, the tourists. Well, can I say, actually, it was, I see you see that there's Suzanne Affelt is on, but it was Susie Stultz who brought that up. She, you can't see her. She's sitting here in the, oh. in the room. But, and I, you don't have to respond, but Susie would be a good, the, the events working group right now only has two EDC members on it. it. It has worked on a few things, and we gave a couple of big grants to events, but the working group hasn't expanded beyond that, and Susie Stultz would be a very good person to recruit from it. I know she's going to say she doesn't have time, so you don't have to respond. But <laughs> but you do represent a point of view. You live right in the center of town and, and, and viscerally understand the impact that it has on people. I think we just got like a whole bunch of yeah. jobs too. Yeah. That would help. Yeah, I know. What? I understand. 
you know, she's making a specific suggestion for how to improve things. But, but anyway, my point is that I think we need to, the other four working groups are now kind of underway. The events working group has given great grants, but let's, but anyway, Deborah, let, Susie, talk to the Susie point. and see if she can convince her to, to okay, join I, the I, discussion. I would love that. I would love to get her perspective because the point that we came up with is like, it's not about necessarily creating something brand new just to create yeah. something brand new. It's to help yeah. with the problems that are already going on based on traffic and et cetera. What can we do to, to assist? I would hope it would be both. And it just growth and, and making it, you know, economic development and making economic development a positive thing, not a negative thing. <laughs> But anyway, we can talk about that offline. I, you know, that's, in any event, I'm just suggesting that Susie has a, a point of view. Right. I, I'm, I'm just saying we'd like to be a part of that yeah, conversation. Absolutely. So please invite yeah. us. Well, well uh, how about, yeah, and actually, well, I, let's, do you want to wait? You can lead it. Uh, but do you want to wait for a group to come forward or do you want to, about Halloween or do you want, how do you want to, it's, it, this is the events working group, basically. It's, it's not, you should be the one to, you don't have to, you, you would be inviting other people, not being invited. Nobody's talked to me about the Halloween thing, so I don't right. know. Are you, are you asking me to, to, to step forward with no, that? I'd be happy to. No, no, no. All right. let, let, let's, work, let's coordinate it offline. But of course, yeah. you and, and, and Michael should absolutely be central to that discussion. And I think you would be the people to whom the Halloween requesters would come first. Got it. I'm just saying we want to, yeah. we'd, we'd love to be a fly on the wall for the tourist conversation. Oh, like, of so, course. Yeah. Yeah. That's in, that's information we need for the group. Got it. I understand. Okay, sorry. Can, Roger. Can I just make a point that, at least from my perspective, I can't speak for Susie, obviously. This is not, a, the, the conversation that, that I thought we discussed having was not about tourists per se. It was about finding a balance between between things that are happening in the village and the quality of life of people living in the village, or, or the town, I shouldn't restrict it to the village, um, although probably most of the impact is in the village, um, and that it's, it's not about discouraging tourism or anything else, it's just about making sure that the EDC specifically is, has at least an understanding of, of some of the needs of for balance, or, or potentially the needs for balance. Because I, I, well I, I think that discussion is critically important. Yeah. Good, great. I really yeah. do. So I just wanted to make it clear. It's and not I like throw that. out and all I, the toys. And I'd like to be involved. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think that's. I think you're just you're echoing. One of you is echoing the other's point. Yeah. Okay. I I, I was using. It's just hard to hear. Yeah, I was using bad shorthand. My apologies. I, I understand that. Okay. So so. Two things have come out of these initial discussions, and we I hope move on. One is that um, the the marketing working group and the chamber will um, will lead or co lead or discuss how to convene a discussion, and maybe with the events working group as well. And then secondly, whenever there's a hallow a specific issue about an event that the working group might consider, and John, we'll, it'll I, come I, forward. I, I, uh, John, I'd like to say, I, I think that we need to really get the events group built out because I think even the, the tourist question is really a question that the events group would have, because I think Deborah brings up some good points, yeah. you know, traffic management and so forth. And I, I think we, I don't know if this is the best place for the marketing group. Okay, no, no, Deborah, if that, that's fine. Then let's have, let's have the, work, the, the events yeah. working group and the chamber work together to coordinate this discussion, this broader discussion. Marketing group can attend if you want, or someone from the yeah, marketing. Like, group. I'd like to attend, but yeah. but I, I think it's no, no, a that's a good point. I, I, Deborah, I didn't realize. I've sort of been waiting for that meeting that I now re that you've said has hap happened to happen. Right, and we wanted to kind of bring it forward to talk about. Great. Um, and I think Michael just just joined, but we're 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 just starting to uh, kind of look for a way to uh, be more active. Um, and to assist. So anyway, we have we have some thoughts on that, and maybe we part of that is bringing it to the um, the conversation that you're talking yeah. about. I think both of these topics are. This is a great way to jump in. So yes. So these the, both of these discussions should be under the purview of the events working group with the chamber, and and let's move that forward. I think that's great. Okay. Um. And and I'm happy to you know let me know how I can sort of support that. Okay, are there any other community comments? Yeah. All right, the agenda, uh, sorry, we have uh, the minutes of this. 
October 6th, October 6th meeting are posted on the website. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the minutes are passed. Okay, the agenda is to simply go through for any of the working groups and any of the initiatives to go through and see if there are any updates or topics to discussion. As a reminder, the five the working groups reflect our five, I'm saying this for some of the non-EDC members on the call, the five working groups reflect the five priorities that the EDC has set, house, expanding workforce housing, marketing Woodstock, expanding child care capacity, rejuvenating the downtown area, and supporting events, uh, and supporting events. And the three initiatives currently are the community grant program, the grant writer program to support grant writing, and, um, and the storefront incentive. And the fourth initiative is conceptually supported, but waiting for the details to see if we'll actually support it, which is a loan fund, a, a revolving loan fund to support local businesses. So what I'd just like to do is go down the working groups. Um, if there are any, I know the child care group has uh, an update, uh, but I'll just go in this order. Um, and uh, starting with the housing working group, is there, I know that Trina has been sick and Jill is not on the call. So is there anyone, any update, for, is there anyone from the housing working group? I don't think anyone is here. I am on it. You are on it, okay. And, is there, and we did just have a meeting, but I'm not. No, no particular a, update. Yeah, yeah, I mean, things are still moving along and we had a call to talk about kind of long-term ideas right. and, and the programs that are running are still running well. But right. beyond that, I'm not prepared to. Yeah, no, that's fine. We have five, I think we have given out five, five, yeah. incent, we've created in, or supported five new rental, right. long-term rental units and there was, are there people still also in the pipeline? I don't. I thought there was one call. last time, but there yeah. were, okay. Sorry. From what I remember, the last the meeting there was one. Programs where you, you incentivize creating the, subsidiary housing? There are two, two, two incentives. One is accessory dwelling units, and one is conversion of short-term rentals to long-term rentals. And we have successfully three. created in both programs. I can't remember. One of them is three, and the other one is two. Right, I so believe I mean, the ADU is more. I hate to more. say your own horn, but... You should probably put something in the listserv or the paper or something. Right. We did. We actually did put exactly that point in the listserv in <laughs> oh, announcing yeah. this meeting. But we should. But no, no. It, it was. Um, you know, I'm not offended that you're not reading my post. But no. But we. I think the housing group and and soon the child care group and the marketing group have all been very active and and. We, we need to think about how to get the word out. I well, agree. that's a success. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's a small, you know, it's, it's a step. And we're not done. I think, I really do think that there are going to be more. Yeah. So. And, and I think the, yeah. the, the biggest thing was that um, there's a lot of people that are, now that they understand right. the issue, I mean, it's worked just to sort of raise the consciousness of the community that this is an issue and that there's some easy solutions. And some people have stepped up without participating in the programs to say, how can I, right. how can I help? So, someone is that Mika or Deborah? Sorry, did you want to say? Something? I was just I was going to add that there are um, working is also looking at uh, uh, other incentives that they want to add. You know, potentially being you know somebody sharing a house or things like that, um, so that they um, they they're they're coming up with some really great stuff. And and I believe they were planning to attend the planning committee, right? The planning committee meeting and talk about collaboration. You mean with this planning and zoning board? Planning and yeah, zoning right. board, yeah. Got it. Okay. All right, anything else on housing? Okay. Um, marketing? Patrick and Beth? Uh, okay, well, we're, we're in the process right now of <laughs> uh, developing the big, the big plan, uh, you know, to, to present. Uh, at the, towards the beginning of the new year. Uh, in terms of how we're doing so far, uh, the, the program is working really, really well, driving a lot of traffic, capturing a lot of names, uh, building up our email list. Uh, we had, just to give you an idea, we had 42,000 people uh, go to the website uh, and we're, we're significantly increasing volume from year over year. Uh, I don't have the specific for year over year. I'm actually working on developing a new report that we can use and present to the EDC. Uh, so I don't have uh, something to show, but 
uh, at the same time too, we're, we're building our, our lists for Facebook uh, and Instagram. And once I get this put together, uh, I'll give you stuff, John, that we can put up on the website. Okay. But we're, we're kind of in the middle of, of planning for next year uh, and continuing the program this year. What, one thing that we did test, uh, you know, the, initially for the initial program in the summer, we tested uh, a dollar value, a hundred dollar gift card versus the night at the Woodstock Inn and Resort. Uh, and for this fall session, we were testing uh, a night at the Blue Horse uh, B&B versus the Woodstock Inn and Resort. Uh, and uh, in a dollar value versus Woodstock Inn, the uh, Woodstock Inn won out. Uh, and right now, it looks like the Woodstock Inn and Resort is also winning in terms of the B&B versus Woodstock Inn before the versus the Inn, uh, which makes sense because the Inn has a you know such a a high um, value in terms of people knowing who, who they are. Mm -hmm. So we're just, you know, we're just literally at the beginning of starting to, to look at the numbers and everything. So there's, there's a lot more work to do. Okay, thank you. Any comments or questions for Patrick? Or Beth, do you wanna add anything? Or, and then, no, Larry? Uh, Patrick, um, this is probably a tough question, but, um, one of my main interests, my main interest really in getting people to come to Woodstock is uh, it seems like we have a lot of tourists now. And of course, we want to want to have tourists here at some level. My real uh, hope is that um, these tourists will convert to um, residents, will bring families here, uh, uh, build houses, reduce our taxes. Um, you know, create a, continue to create a really nice environment. Is there any any way to track that? Not right at this second. I mean, we are we are building our future plan in mind, uh, but right now there's not. Uh, right now, we focus the first the first part is on driving people to Woodstock, uh, but tourists mainly. But we are building part of the, the continuation of the program would be to build in both uh, you know, people who want to live here versus uh, businesses who want to move here as well. Uh, but we, we're just starting that, uh, you know, and that'll be part of what, we're, what we want to do. The, the, the struggle we have right now is there's not a lot of housing in the door. Uh, so you, know, you got to be careful not to be too successful at something that will frustrate people. Uh, and so we're we're trying to balance that out right now, and that's part of the thinking going on going forward into the the plan we're going to present for the the bigger the bigger plan. Susie and then Beth. So we've noticed in, um, like a, you know where the tourists are are hearing about um, Woodstock because we've noticed a lot more Asians and um, and and uh, people from like South um, sorry uh, like India and Pakistan and Turkey. And I'm just curious where, you know, the, where these people are learning. You know, it's just it's been a very interesting change in, in the types of people who are coming here. I have no can't idea. Hear. We can't hear, John. Yeah, oh, sorry. we can't hear. Um, the question is, how, there's, there, are, there seem to be a lot of people from Asia, basically, and from, a, what did you call it, Central yeah, Europe, Central like uh, Central Turkey and... Central more international people, and where are they getting this? Where are they getting the information? I, seems I to be can more. make a suggestion about that, and I would think it'd be Dartmouth College. I'm sorry? Dartmouth. The, 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 either the students, the families of students who visit Hanover like other places to go, and we get them at, at the cafe all the time. I see. And they and, and you know, I'll have conversations with them, and either the kids are going in there and they're studying and then dad comes in to pick them up or while they're there, they'll walk around town. Uh, but I think Dartmouth is, is, is a source and, and like for international students. Up stuff, um, like around Sleepy Hollow and stuff. And I think that there is some other source because um, it's, a, it's I don't know. a lot of people. Okay. Well, I couldn't hear that last comment, but um, I will say that many Asian 
visitors and visitors from uh, different countries come with a travel brochure from away, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in their printed in their language with the Jenny Farm, with Woodstock, with Cloudland Farm, with um, Sleepy Hollow, and those people, uh, you know, are bringing their cameras, etc. And they are they are being driven by I I honestly don't know the details that they're being driven to by, but it's very interesting that they come with, you know, flip pages of photos that they want to see. Um, this is true. Yeah. It's like there's like an Instagram account account or something that's burning. Well, well, of course, Instagram, was, there is an Instagram out there, Sleepy Hollow, that was created several years ago with all kinds of filters, et cetera, that makes it look unbelievable. Oh. And everyone wants to see that. And we will not give that information out anymore. We don't, we've decided not to share private homes because it's such a burden on that home. But they are there for that. Um, and then there was something else that, that you had asked John. Um, oh, no, what was it? It's just curious because there is a, there's something that is funneling people to Woodstock, and we don't oh. quite know what it is, but it is, you know, people from Asia, and they are coming with, you know, and then we, we should find out where it right. is. Right. The other thing is that the chamber, the local chambers, so Lebanon, Hanover, Woodstock, Hartford, um, and um, vital communities have created these six brochures that are printed in six different languages um, out there on the web. So they're in French, they're in Mandarin, they're in Spanish. I, I wish I could tell you the rest, but I'd be happy to get you that information if you're interested. But they're out there for people to. Um, we did that with the state grant this time last year. All right, uh, uh, Deborah, uh, last comment on marketing because then I want to move on. Deborah, go ahead. I was just going to say I think what what we need to take away I what I think is trying to be said in the conversation is there is something that's happening clearly online that is having um kind of a domino effect and the fact that things are showing up in many languages and different communities around the world are finding us means that something is going right with the marketing it's not so much a uh you know we're pursuing one group of people or another it's that we're be you know that it's getting wider and therefore you know ideally our community is growing and becoming more diverse whether it's tourists or long-term people so i think I think it's a success when you look around and see and see people from all over the world. Um, so I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to uh, Patrick and to everybody else who's who started that, who may have something to do with making that happen. It's it's good news. I agree. Yeah. Looks very uh, I Beth, really truly last brief comment. Go really ahead. fast. I'm sorry. <laughs> My comment to Larry is that it would be great to turn visitors into long-term residents, but the housing um, stock is so limited. I mean, you know, even for second homeowners, there's, you know, 15 houses in Bridgewater, Barnard, Comfort, and Woodstock, so. Better for sale. Um, John, I, well, if I could say one last thing, John. Uh, in terms of traffic coming here, uh, it's not just uh, the marketing stuff, but you have to understand too, and, and I've seen this as a lodging property, I get lots of emails from many, many different uh, online uh, engines trying to get me to, to put my motel and all my information on their site, and they're all international things that are coming after. So uh, I, I think the international crowd is is really ramping up their online activity to drive you know everyone from all different countries you know to the United States, and particularly a lot of Woodstock traffic. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's a combination of many things. Uh, and I think there's been a big push by the international crowd. Yeah. All right. That's great. All right. Let's let's move on. It's, it's, it's great to hear this. It's very interesting. Um, 
Uh, I just want to move on to the third one, which is child care. So Todd is the missing member tonight. He couldn't. He's has a personal conflict, and um, but asked that um, that I g summarize and update. Larry has been very involved. Mika has also uh, been involved, and so feel free to chime in. Um, Todd wanted the, the the working group has been quite active, and I, I think we all know that child care constraints are a significant impediment to people who have lived here. We have direct evidence of people who are moving away because they can't find child care. I mean, they've told us very directly and they've moved. <laughs> and other people who are considering moving away. Um, the child care working group has now met and you know, had comprehensive discussions with all four of the local providers. Uh, and by local, I mean Rainbow, um, the WCCC, which the, the Woodstock is at the Catholic, uh, Woodstock Catholic Child, Child Care, no, Woodstock. Uh, congregational. congregational Church, sorry, the Congregational Church. Um, the uh, Above Rainbow, the TCC, what does that stand for? Um, community, community Campus. Community Campus, and the uh, new Child Care Facility. Did you say Woodstock Nursery? Oh, sorry. No, no. I, yes, I, I, there are five. Sorry, w at Woodstock Nursery and the new um, child care provider in Bridgewater, uh, right over the line, who are, are serving almost entirely Woodstock people. Of those five, four of them um, expressed an interest in expanding their capacity. At Woodstock Nursery, which is why I forgot the Mika, has basically said that they do not have an interest in expanding. Um, we are expecting. At the, the, the working group is going to host a public meeting at which each of the four uh, providers who have expressed, who have specific ideas to expand, are going to invite those groups and members of the EDC and the public to come to that meeting, uh, which will be sometime between now and the next EDC meeting in December. Uh, to basically think of it as a pre-application, to basically vet and question and understand the proposals that are coming from these four groups. I'm about to summarize them in the very briefest of terms so that you're aware of it. And not only that you're aware of the proposals, but that you're aware of the scale of what we will soon be asked to consider. Because this, to me, is hitting, uh, leaving aside the specific merits of each of these proposals. We have to deal with those specifically. But this is exactly, precisely what we said we wanted to get to. <laughs> and this is absolutely, if we do this, if these proposals meet our, you know, in our judgment, will help the problem. Um, I think this will have a major impact uh, on, on Woodstock. The four, the, 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 there are four segments of child care that the working group has studied. Day, I'll call it daycare, under three, and daycare age three to five. And then there's after school under three and after school older. The, the main needs are in all of the after school segments and the under three. There are some very, very small needs in the three to five, but that segment is for the most part met. And we have proposals in all three of the areas where there's need, in the under three in the and in both of the age groups of the after school, below three and and above three, basically. If you're three, that day you can't get child care. But um, the, in the, the Bridgewater group, in total, the grant requests that we're going to get next month and that will be discussed at the meeting will roughly be requesting $300,000 in funding and will create within 12 months and, that, and the creation will start sooner than that. It will ramp up. We'll create between 60 and 80 child care slots. Uh, roughly 40 slots in the under three, which is where this, this most serious shortage is. Uh, and then um, somewhere between 15 and 35, oh, sorry, 10 to 20 slots in the young after school group and five to 15 slots in the older after school group. And, and, and there's one other proposal that could be coming later that would expand that older after school group further. Um, we do need to check, the working group does need to make sure that we're not oversupplying the market. I don't think this will. I think this will meet the need, but we have to check. We did a survey 
of, of about 100 people to try. And we have uh, data on some of the wait sizes of the waiting lists, who are, which are considerable. So it looks like somewhere between 60 and 80 new spaces would be created. The request for that funding would be about $300,000. The criteria that we've asked each of the providers to, to demonstrate, and which at least some of the proposals have demonstrated, the others are working on it, is if we provide this funding, will it bring you to a sustainable business model? In other words, if we give you $90,000 so you can get 20 more kids, and that's roughly, that's one of the proposals. When you get those 20 kids, once you've ramped up and you've got the teachers and you're paying them, and you're paying them either a better wage or you're giving them health care benefits or whatever in order to retain them, and you're getting the revenue from those 22 kids based on the current market rate for the revenue, will you be breaking even? Or will you be still losing money and you're going to come back next year and say, well, that's great, we need another 90000 otherwise we have to get rid of the kids. I mean, the positions, not the kids. That, the kids we won't be getting rid of. That, that specifically for Bridgewater? That, that, that is, happens to be the proposal for Bridgewater, this numbers. But the proposals the, we, yeah, I got it. Yeah, are the same for I all of them. And so the proposals that we are getting you know, give us detailed you know, business plans month by month. Here's who we're going to hire. Here's what kind of rooms we're going to put them in. Here's how many kids we think can go into those rooms by law. And, and here's what the revenue would be when we fill those slots. And so if this plan works, it will, it feels like it will go, I don't want to say that there won't ever be a shortage, but I think it will fill, you know, on the order of magnitude of all of the unmet demand. Um, and I think that would be, and, it's a, and it should be a one-time grant. I have a question. So, uh, th so this, this is, there's two, there are going to be two chances to discuss this with the providers. It, one is at the public meeting that we hold sometime in November, and the other is at next time EDC meeting when these proposals will hopefully be presented to us for a discussion and for and for funding. Okay, questions, Joe. Okay, uh, at the last, I think it was the last meeting we had, we discussed this, and I brought up the point of, I think what is being proposed is, um, Woodstock kids. You know, and employees of Woodstock. There you go. That's yeah. my, my, yeah. that's a concern. Yeah, no, I think they, they can live in Bridgewater, right? But they're working in Woodstock. Right. Can their kids so, go? So, to well, so let's talk about what. Yeah. So we we have not yet drawn up the, the the language, but we've had a discussion. And Larry and Mika, you can correct me, but I know we've had a discussion with some of these providers about this issue, and all of the ones we've had a discussion with have agreed. The basic idea is. If we're going to fund X percent of your capacity, we want Woodst we want new we want the new positions to be given to, to for Woodstock residents, children of Wood children who live in Woodstock, or children or, of people who work in Woodstock yes. to get to get first priority at those slots. We're not saying that you can't fill them with people from other towns, but only after you've taken the Woodstock people off of the waiting list for the proportion of the funding that we're giving you. And, and that will be, I believe, I mean, this is up to the working group to recommend, but I believe that will be a requirement for uh, any of the grants. And the discussions that I've been in, which have been with two of the groups of the four, they understood that and they said, okay, that's reasonable. They, they could agree to that. So yeah. I don't know, Meek, Meek and Larry, do you want to add anything to that? And then any questions? No, no. no that's how I understand it as well. Okay. Sorry, Larry, go ahead. Okay, uh, Susie, you had a question. Yeah, so no, just a recommendation that that November meeting, if you want parents to come, it has to be the time where they can get babysitters. So like maybe a Saturday, you know, where they can have kids. So one parent could watch like seven kids in the park or something like that. Well, maybe we can or offer childcare at the meeting. Let's get a corral, some pizza. I mean, but that's a concern because I know oh. that a lot of my friends who have kids can't come to meetings because they don't have babysitters. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that has been has been discussed pretty uh, extensively with these meetings, um, and so we've tried really hard to make sure that we can accommodate times that are that are reasonable for people with small children. Childcare at the meeting would be great. Yeah, I think that would be. I think that's a great idea. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh wait, that was my idea. So, yeah, Roger. Um, so. I think this is the best news I've heard about Woodstock government for a very long time. I have to say, this is 
sounds like exactly like the highest impact that the EDC could be doing. Um, knowing you, I, 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 I imagine that you have looked very carefully at the economics of, of how the childcare business works. Do you have a sense that, that these can be sustainable? The, the, the two, one proposal that was, one proposal that was put forward, so sorry, we created a framework, a financial framework that we asked people to fill in. Okay. And I would say that the providers have had varied degrees of adherence to the spreadsheet or to the concepts behind the spreadsheet. But I think we will be, we know that it's possible for the economics to work because one of the groups understood immediately what we were asking and was immediately able to give us, in effect, a business plan that showed within, I think, 14 months that basically the revenues catch up with the expenses. You know, what, ha you know, what happens is you hire a teacher, they say you can't get the kids the day you hire them, you need a ramping up, blah, 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 and here's what the ramp is, and we've done it before and we can do it again, and they know what they're doing. So the answer is it's possible. Now, I will tell you that the four proposals, at least that I've seen at a high level, don't all adhere to that. They're all well-intentioned. They are all talking about expansion. They have identified what's stopping them from expanding and what it would cost to overcome it. So these are good, focused ideas. I think whether all four of them turn into a business plan that we could approve on December 3rd or whatever the date is, maybe it might need a little bit more work. But it's, it's very encouraging. Because remember where we started was we sent out requests to meet with the groups, and no one answered the request. Remember, we had an EDC meeting. We were saying, well, the working group tried. We reached out to everybody. Nobody answered. I specifically mentioned, that doesn't seem to be any will out there to yeah. really get involved with this. It, that's how limited the feedback was at that time. Right. So the working group has done somehow either, I don't know, some combination of the providers and the working group have completely changed that dynamic. Right. And it's, it's very exciting. And I, I would just suggest that for anybody who is putting together a, a business plan that doesn't necessarily make sense that it would it would be well worth the time of this group to help them write that business plan and understand how to go forward. That's already what's happening. I mean, that, that okay, that's great. it's Excellent. yeah. It, there's back and forth. Yeah, that's so happening. Thank you for the. Well, it's it's really it's really Mika, Larry, and Todd, and and Joe has been involved also. I don't know. Um, all four. Sorry, I didn't very, include very, you in the very beginning. Not, like I say, this is the best meeting. Yeah. Such, it's exactly it's exactly what the working groups are. Yeah. yeah right. All right. Um, there's no one. Uh, the Glad you came. The downtown revive. Uh, sorry. Any other questions or comments about uh, child care? Okay. And, I, John. Yeah. I just would throw in that I have been lucky enough to be in all, meeting with all four of those groups, and Woodstock is very lucky. We have got some. Very intelligent, motivated uh, providers out there. They're, they're they're very high quality. Every single one of them. And I just wanted to mention. That's great. Yeah. 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 I agree completely. Okay. Um. Downtown revitalization. Um. I don't see anyone who's on. Well, Joe. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I forgot you but were doing. Stuart, Stuart, Stuart's chair. Yeah. Do, do, is there any update? Do you want to give any update? Not really. Um, Stuart was going to try to put together yeah. um, a budget for a couple yeah. of ideas. Uh, I, I did. He's been out of town. He uh, uh, he had uh, a son graduated from yeah. uh, a place down south. He was he was gone for a couple of weeks. I'm sure next meeting there'll be something available. Okay. Uh, and then events. Sorry, we, we talked a little bit about events. Deborah, you're is Deborah still here? Her camera's off. Do you, Deborah and or Michael, do you want to say anything? Uh, Deborah, Michael, before you came on or as you came on, Deborah was giving us a little bit of an update. Do, go ahead, one of you. Who wants to go? Michael wants. Um, to go. Yeah. So we kind of we met and we're just trying to figure out like how to function as an events group because we we can't sit around and wait for people to approach us to say, oh, we we finally have someone that wants to have an event and, and need some help with it. So we're, we're kind of thinking about how to restructure our committee to be more proactive with events. And so I think there's a lot more coming. I just don't think we're ready to kind of 
present yet. So probably in the next meeting. Fantastic. Deborah, you anything to add? Uh, no, I, um, the only thing that I, I want to do is let Michael know exactly what I said prior to him getting onto the call, which was that the idea is to make sure that we support the things that are going on in town and the needs of the town, whether it is looking for more people or how to um, engage the people that are here in a way that um, uh, makes it easy, easier to get around town and more to do. Okay, Beth. Well, I'm just happy to, to chat with any of them, uh, either of them, about what we're doing. Wassel is expanding a little. I mean, we're we're taking baby steps, but um, Pentangle is having a show on Thursday night. We're doing wagon rides Thursday, um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There, a Pentangle has also added the VSO on the Wednesday following Wassel weekend. So I think you're going to see. I mean, we are taking baby steps, and I know that we don't want to inundate the town, and and um, but we, this is such an, an amazing event, and so if I, either of you or any of you want to participate, um, we have places for you um, during the weekend. Awesome. Maybe we can set up a meeting. Um, in the next week or so? Yeah? Okay. I'm game. Thumb. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's great. And we'll look forward, Michael, to, and Deborah to, uh, and Beth to, you know, continued developments. Okay. Under the three programs, the community grant program, the grant writer, and the storefront incentive. Let's just briefly, I don't think there's anything to report on storefront incentive. The program is still in place. It still has funding. We haven't discussed it in I, I think occasionally we sort of say, should we cancel it or just keep the funds in there? There's not a lot of funds, but it's probably enough for one more storefront or maybe two, um, and uh, or probably one. And we haven't had an application in you know quite a while. Uh, so um, can we can we publicize that more? Yeah, I don't think people under, that. understand that what it is. It. I think it, I think it's a communication thing. Well, no, I don't think I the. Um, I think that, um, sure, I mean, we can. We absolutely can. It's, in most cases in the past, I can't remember, in most cases, the people, what, they find out about it when they're starting to investigate an empty store at front and the, and the landlord sort of tells them about it. And so we, we, there's been not a lot of instances where people move in and don't ask, move into a new building. In, it's a very limited space. It's not anywhere in, you know, in Vermont. It's just in the downtown physical area. So I'm not opposed to you know, communicating it. But I think in the past, through word of mouth, among building owners and realtors and so forth, they've, they seem to have found it. Joe? Yeah. Deb, you know, I, I, I was on the commission when this first was introduced, and I, the, the concept was for it to be an incentive and pot and partly make it, um, how should I say this, a little easier for somebody to occupy one of the empty stores that we had downtown. It never really caught on. I mean, it was a great idea. You know, a lot of good ideas. They don't all work. I don't right. think this one was was something that ignited everybody. It was just, That's it just wild. didn't happen. Well, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, it's still there. It's still there. Nobody really gets excited about it. I think the people who got the money got excited about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah they did. But, you know, the people who got the money didn't do it because that was there. They didn't open the storefront or that wasn't the persuasive right. factor that persuaded them one way or the other. I mean, they learned about it after they opened or while they were opening. They, you know, it wasn't like it a didn't change their decision. Tool. That's probably right. Okay. Uh, Mika? Just out of curiosity, how many empty storefronts do we have right now? That's Does anybody know? Well, uh, there. Well, uh, I'm guessing. Well, we have some Mika, but we, there were there were there's plans in the works for a couple of them already. Yep. So to kind of nail down how many are empty, are remaining empty, I think it's hard to understand right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I think they're. I mean, we're we're kind of at a. Is it? Is it crazy to say we're at an all-time low? It feels like you know. Most of the buildings, if they're 
the ones, as you just said, the ones that are empty, I feel like a lot of them have plans. Yes. Yeah. And so, aren't going to be empty for long. Yes. That's so true. He, he, here's, yeah, he, here's um, something to consider. So how many, how many storefront between the rec center and Worthy? He loves to bring this one up. He, lo he loves I this love number. It. He just. <laughs> you know what, John? The amount of times you've asked this question, I wish I could remember the answer. Well, you know, I've seen. <laughs> there's the order of magnitude. There are a hundred retail storefronts between yeah. Worthy Kitchen and the Rec Center. That's John's budget trivia. Yeah, from what you I can, know that. <laughs> from what I can tell, there's never been more than ten of them vacant at one time, and there's probably never been less than seven of them vacant at one time. Which basically right. means that on That's average, right. if you do the math, you know, a storefront is vacant once every twelve years. And my guess is, if you went to Manhattan, you would find exactly the same thing. Maybe it'd be once every seventeen years or something like that. It's the most important to me, the most important factor in understanding economic development in Woodstock is having patience. The stores fill up. They, every 12 years, someone goes out of business. It takes two years. We'd like it to take two weeks, but it takes two years, and then someone else comes in and fills it in. So, And maybe the storefront incentive doesn't do much to change that dynamic. But in any event, I, I, it, it does feel like we're in a good, it, not just, it does feel we're in a good place, and, and not just with storefronts, but also with um, some of the other uh, uh, residential buildings that are being renovated in town and, and the new storefronts like the Mangalitsa enhancement and so forth. Uh, Beth? Yeah, just, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mika. Oh, Finish up. And then one, more, one more quick question. Does anybody know what the plan is for Jesse's spot for the, um, for who is Sylvia? For what? Who is Sylvia? Oh, Sylvia. Yeah, I know, but I'm not going to tell anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, someone bought it. Someone bought it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it, so it, it, was, just, it was bought years ago, a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. That's of. correct. Beth? That, that's yeah. correct. I just wanted to say a couple things. One is that um, there's probably, well, anyway, so Blended Banks is finally going, is going into, as you probably saw, or were part of um, the other house. In, on the green, so that's somebody that that John had recruited, I think, and then they find and they came to the market on the green for the last three years, mm. and have now been able to rent a space, and they're doing cupcakes and cakes, etc. So it's going to be awesome. Um, and I just I want you to think about the market on the green as perhaps a business development, and I'm only saying that because we have. The Splendid Banks, we have Abercadabra Aber Coffee, and we have Farmhouse Pottery, who all started selling at the market on the green and expanded their business into Woodstock. And I, it's fabulous, and you might want to look there for other business opportunities. Well, can, can, can I actually suggest that that fits into the events group, the newly revitalized events group? Okay. Suggestion: If you remember when you had that, open up a coffee bar at the in the green. Yeah, it could, but but I don't know, Deborah and Michael, you don't have to agree or disagree now. But just I would just think about whether or not that's an event that has a different kind of economic development benefit for Woodstock. But it is it has all of the physical characteristics of an event. Um, right. And so thinking about fun, okay. what what would funding that what what, what would that do? John, I have a question for you. Um, if oh, we fund, if we on, fund, Beth, one go ahead, Deborah. Oh, sorry, did I interrupt Beth? I'm sorry. I think she was answering my question, probably. Beth, go ahead. None of you are muted, Beth. I just wanted to say we're not looking for funding. I mean, we love your support. We're not looking for funding. It's a great event, and I think that you, that we all, that this group might learn from it, maybe help. But those who have been here year after year after year um, create but what um, if, for those folks. Do business. No, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, what if you had a salesperson? What if you had a part-time salesperson who was going out and recruiting businesses? I, that may be a terrible idea, but I'm saying that you... you my point is that you, is saying, uh, John, I think Beth, what she's saying is uh, look at the people who come to the market.
to win and, and you know and sell their wares there and maybe look at one of those as being a new business in Woodstock. Uh, is that what that's I think what that means? You know, use them as an economic development, you know, for a new business within Woodstock, as opposed to looking to get people to to be on the market on the green, get one of the people who is in currently on the market on the green to you know take a, a building and make a business. People out of that it. have been successful have. Laura White Pottery. They're fat, she's fabulous. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. All right. Any Thank other? You that, Beth. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, no, I, re I was just wondering, um, you know, if we go completely all in with this childcare, how much more, you know, where, what does that do to uh, what's available for these, uh, for other things? Or are we yeah. then saying, you know, because that's 300,000. Right, so we, we have about, um, so this year, so at the end of this year, we will have about 400, between 450 dollars and $500,000 in reserve. Our revenue this year will be about $350,000, so, and I believe we're on an upward trend. So I think, I think we will have three hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know, barring. Well, there, I mean, there could be a recession next year, so, you know, that those are the orders of magnitude. It will it will make a big dent in what we have, but there'll be room for all of the groups. Other things. Yeah, yeah. got it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying that I don't support it. I think it sounds wonderful. Right. I just wanted to know if that's if we're we're like putting our flag and going we're childcare this this year right. and there's nothing else. No, I think we. It doesn't sound that way. No, I think we have funds if. For real, you know, for for big ideas that are really powerful, yeah. we have the funds. Okay, well, let's just marketing is going to be <laughs> yeah diverting them. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Patrick, take can you do two minutes on the grant writer because I want to finish with the community yeah. grant program. Real, real quick, uh, uh, the grant writing uh, we, we haven't had any grants written yet, but we've had a lot of people that we're talking to. We're just the hardest part with the grant writing is is finding the grant to fit somebody into. Uh, and managing their expectations, you know, because people think you can get a grant for, you know, just anything, and you know, grants are usually very, very specific. We did uh, sit down and have a breakfast with uh, Allison and uh, Charlie Kimball, uh, which was very enlightening. Uh, and there, we're working with getting the information to them for some of the state grants and stuff that are available. And there's some people that have applied uh, for some of the things that would be the state grant. So. It's a, it's a lot of just digging and finding and hunting and, and trying to match the grant with the people. And right now we, we haven't had any, but we've got one uh, we're trying to work on with uh, uh, the Mountain Creamery that has a possibility to help them do some expansion uh, and so forth. So uh, we're it's you know it's just digging and finding and hunting and trying to match people up. But okay. then so far we've had a, a fair amount of uh, people who have. Have gone to the website and filled out the forms. It's just we haven't been able to find the right things for people. Before I forget, Patrick, have you talked with Stuart Matthews about his discussions um, with Jira Billings and, and in that? I have not. Okay, could you just remind you just remember that there's that's an opportunity and there are grants available for that. Who is this? It's just Stuart Matthews. And I, I'd rather talk about it offline if that's all right. Okay. It's, I just want to write the name down, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. Then lastly, the community grant program. Um, so, and I apologize for this. Deborah and I were supposed to draft an announcement that we were going to announce the community grant program. Deborah did her part to at least tee up the discussion. Hey, I was, you were going to send me something, blah, 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 and so forth. I never sent it to you, Deborah. Obviously, you know that. But now the rest of you do. I apologize. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so, you, um, the sorry, but the last step that I wanted to take before we announced it has been taken, which is that we, in the form of I, maybe a couple of you were there, um, went to the select board and told them that we've had five meetings over the last five months to talk about our priorities. I shared the five priorities with the five working groups. I told them about the three programs. I told them about the possibility of a fourth program, the business loan fund, that we were investigating that. Um, and I told them about our plans to, um, 
to fund $100,000 this year of community grants. And I told them of our intention to decrease that amount in subsequent years. I don't remember if I talked about the specific amounts, which we talked all about at length. Um, they were supportive of all of that program and appreciated the update. So we have now gone through publicly and with the select, and I told the select board, I don't know that we are, I think it's a kind of a gray area whether we require your approval. In the past, the only thing they've ever voted on and approved have been our funding requests. Um, but that we wanted to give them a chance to provide us with any feedback if they had any concerns about the program and the priorities. They were very supportive of it. They asked some questions about the loan fund, and I think they actually indicated that they were, they liked the idea of the loan fund as well, I think, if, they, if I remember the comments. But there were no negatives about any of it. So we're sort of cleared to go. Uh, I would just like to talk about the timing and the communication, and then, in fact, then repeat the offer. Deborah, if you're still willing to work with a recalcitrant writer like me, so the two of us, if you would delegate to us the writing of the invitation, but I'd just like to talk about what the announcement should say. We've agreed in the past that we're going to, at the past meetings, that we're going to use the same criteria. We'll use the same application form. We'll get rid of the pre application. I think the timing that we could have is if we get this out in a week on November 10th, we could give people two months to apply. That would take it to January 10th. Um, we could have our meeting. Um, we could have our meetings before the end of January and have the grants approved by the select board by the middle of February. Um, that seems to me to be a good balance in terms of timing. Uh, and I want to talk about what we would, s the points we would make in the announcement, which I think are pretty simple. But before that, can we, just since I raised the timing first, people comfortable with that timing? What it would mean is in the end of January, second half of January, we would have you know, I'm guessing because it's a smaller number that we might have a smaller number of applicants. And so we would have some evening or evenings the way we did before, 20, you know, same format in the second half of January. I see people here. Jennifer. I don't see why we wouldn't speed that up, John. Uh, two months, I mean, people who are going to apply are going to apply. I mean, I don't think giving them two months for, say, a month and a half is... Uh, well, the only difference is the month and a half is in the week of Christmas, basically. And so there's kind of, I think, doing it, oh, okay. we true. should either do it on, do December 20th, but not, or, or January 10th, but not January 1st or 2nd. It's like yeah, having yeah. to write a paper for your teacher over Christmas vacation. So. Yeah, I forgot about Christmas. Yeah. So, uh, so are p anyone opposed to the, that schedule, November 10th and January 10th? Okay. Um, so in terms of the announcement, um, I think there are the only, I think there might be two sensitive points. One has to do with whether or not we mention, and if we do mention, how we mention, and why we mention, that we're going to be distributing $100,000 in grants. Right. Okay, well, that, that's the first sensitive point. And let me just say what the second sensitive one is, then we'll come back to it. And the second sensitive point, well, that's the first one. Let's just talk about that. Does anyone have a point of view? Well, Joe said, go ahead. I, I will tell you, by the way, that the select board, who, which has been uninvolved with this, I think sounded like we okay, whatever. Yeah. I'm just not. I'm not excited about the so, idea of saying anybody. Hey, oh, we, we got this back. much money. Who wants what? Uh -uh. You know. Um, I think we should look at the applications and see what is applicable to yeah. the money that we have available. I wouldn't. My personal opinion. Just uh, my personal opinion. I wouldn't announce. I would We've got a hundred thousand dollars coming in. No, no, no. I, I, mean, I would uh, disagree with that. I would disagree. Okay, Patrick, with that and then disagree. Roger. Go ahead, Patrick. And I would disagree with that because we need to set the expectation, and the expectation is we're looking to do big things. And I think we should, if we're when we announce this, we should say here are some of the big things we're going to be doing, you know, and that are on the on the block, uh, and and let people know because if we don't let people know, we're not being. Uh, transparent and I think better to, to, to have it out there and let people say what they're going to say but we've set the priorities we've had a half a dozen meetings on setting these priorities and I think we should just stick to our guns and let people know what's what okay uh, Roger um, this is a public meeting yes yeah. so you're talking about <laughs> well we've been we've talked about yeah, this exactly. meetings. so just I, I mean I would just say 
To the extent that there has been dissatisfaction with people who maybe didn't get grants, it's because they didn't fully understand or, or fully know what, what the expectations were. So I would, I would be as explicit and, and clear as possible. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying the organization with the input of the public and the select board, the EDC with the input of the public and the select board, decided to go after big, big initiatives such as eliminating the childcare problem. Right. Um, and I don't, you know, I think that's great PR. And then you just make very clear that these are the expectations. This is how much money we have to give out, and and the decisions will be made based on our best understanding of the benefits. And you already know who's going to complain. Yeah, right. Deborah and then me, and then Marion. Deborah. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I I agree with what's being said here now. So I mean, which is just uh, transparency. Transparency is the best way of doing it, and. You know, we have this to spend. We're looking for this. Doesn't mean like we're going to give it all away, you know, or give it all out. So I mean, I think that's part of the languaging thing that we'll work on, John. But I just want to be—I uh, may be, be misunderstanding what you're saying. It's not that we have a hundred thousand dollars. We're looking for people to put in um, grants proposals at a hundred thousand dollars. It's that we have a hundred thousand dollars that we're spending. We, we're looking to spend on grants in these categories, and then we're also looking for the larger grants. Isn't that correct? There's the, two different the, things. The in these categories is not a constraint. I think what, what the way I the way I've talked about it, and I feel to some extent we've talked about it, but I want to clarify this: is that the the big proposals, the, the, the working groups are focused on the five priorities. We are seeking right. from them big proposals. We are also, right. I would say, seeking from the public big proposals. If, you know, if, if some group of people comes and says, we want $200,000 for childcare, and that's a better proposal than the four we have, we ought to give them the money. And so right. we are, and remembering that, remember that we've decided that on the big grants, there's not going to be an annual cycle. We're going to take them as they come. So that, pe right. so that the announcement would presumably say, if you have a big grant in these five areas, come to us any time. We, yes. we are soliciting proposals in these five priority areas at any time, if they're big. Don't come to us with a $2,000 proposal unless somehow magically it's going to have a huge impact. However, right. we are also not restricting to those five categories. We are allocating up to $100,000 to once a year on an annual schedule to members of the community for grants that are small and that or of any size that are either in those five areas or not something that is it just has to be economic and community development and come to us as a member of the community and something that you think would benefit would develop the economy or the community and so it's not in in any cat that's the category economic and community and I development. get I, I get what you're saying I think somebody had said that, that then people would be going for the larger grants, and that's not what it is. The 100000 is for a grants of any size. Is the pool, correct. It's, right. Right. And so I just think we need to make exactly yeah, right. what you're well, saying. That needs to be specified. Well, based on that, and I would draw my objection. I didn't completely understand it, and okay. I, you know, okay with I, uh, I made a mistake. Well, I changed my mind. Okay, I good. I changed my mind. All right, so so Deborah and I will will be transparent and oh sorry Marion I forgot sorry no it was just it was just a communication thing that I just think um, the way that information is received and perceived it might be helpful to just make two separate announcements you know what I mean just to make an announcement that says um, we're going to spend up to a hundred thousand of our budget in this in this you know round and we're seeking applications due November 10th and then in a separate announcement say here's what we're doing with our big money just because I, I feel like the way people receive information, it's just a lot at once, and it's confusing, and they don't necessarily need to be received together. I, I kind of agree with you and kind of disagree with you because from a transparency standpoint, the first question I would ask is, well, you gave 320000 out last year. Why only a hundred? Right. But, th but that's why I would, I would be you know, careful to say 
on November 10th, we are going to start a process to give away 100000 of the annual budget that we will be giving away. And then, right? So it's just- Why 100? It, why not 300? So, and, and so I would assume that, that, like if I read that, the way that most people read things, which is not paying that much attention, would be, oh, they're giving the rest away at a different time. Right. So if you just say, like, this is what we're giving away right now. This is the process. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly have all the details on the website, but I just think on the listserv, I might not try to put everything all at once. All right, well, let I'm, me disagree. I'm going to disagree heavily because it could, people are going to complain. They're going to say it's only 100,000 and they yeah. need to understand why. And, and I, we have, I think, uh, as someone in the audience said, you know, this is a big deal with the child care thing and, and big solutions and big, big change and, you know, big things happening as opposed to a bunch of little things. So I, I think you just got to be upfront with people say, this is what we're doing. This is why we're doing it. And, and, and these are the anticipated things that are happening. Mika, I think I, you raised your hand and I forgot to call on you. <laughs> No, that's okay. I, I was going to just sort of echo the the need for transparency and you know on both the front end, front end and the back end, um, and you know an echo that I'm not psyched about the listserv comments that are coming our way, uh, but they're always from the same people, so you know whatever. Um, it, yeah, I mean I I think we're all saying the same thing. Uh, although I think also there is something to be said about the way people process information. I mean, this wasn't why I raised my hand, but I'll just say there is something to be said about the way people process information and, and uh, sadly, the attention span we all have. And so when you're looking at a listserv post that's long and is identifying, you know, however many things, uh, it's, in, it's possible that people won't read it all or they'll skim it and then they'll be mad that they didn't get all the information that we were clearly sharing because they didn't bother to read through the whole thing. So I think there there might be a, a good reason to maybe break up our communications into, into chunks. Um, but that, that's not my level of expertise. So I, I leave that to all of you who are much smarter than I am. Deborah, your, your hand is poised to be raised <laughs> but not being raised. <laughs> If you're going to sit there like this, <laughs> you need to move it up or down. <laughs> you have a thought? I don't. I, yeah, I think. I, no, I love. It. I love what everybody's saying, and I think. I think right, it's she just wants to go to the bathroom. <laughs> well, I think that I would say that. Let's put it this way, Deborah. Why don't you and if if the group will delegate to us, why don't we work on it? If we are going to combine it, let's make sure we focus on kind of brevity and simplicity and point people for more information to other pages, right. or we'll separate it. Yeah, and the, the, there's the call to action part, and then there's the, like, the sort of here's what we've done part, and, which are kind of two separate, you know. And it's like the announcement. This year, there'll be two different ways of doing it, brief, 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 and then the next right. day, it'll be, like, one, right. next it, day, it'll be two. Yeah, so I, it's, it, to me, the call, I, I think it's important that, personally, that the call to action be clear that what we don't want is people submitting big proposals on housing, as an example, in the community grant process, because they have a better way of doing it and we'll give them, yeah. So I just want, I want to take out of the community grant process the things that might be, would fit better with the working groups. Yes. So as, as long as we can get that call to action part, make it clear that it's separate, then we can do the, 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 the what we've achieved and so forth is not part of this messaging. That's a different, I, a different I challenge. It, I just so. think it's going to be difficult to be completely clear about it. I mean, it's yeah. be, it's it, has, gonna, it has to be simple so and understandable. Be yeah, okay. yeah. Well, but I, I, but I think it can be clear. I think you just have yeah, to say... Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. I think yeah. it's going to be difficult to be clear. Yeah. All right. Well, but, uh, yeah, we'll I, think, I think it's as simple as this. I think we're making it more complicated. We don't need to explain everything. We just need to say we're doing $100,000 this year in community grants, and here's the reason why. Or we're going to be do, doing some big grants that people can, can, can do, but we're going to be some big grants that are going to be big, big changes. And for more information, go here. Uh, and that way they'll, they'll, they'll understand. But I think we need to be, we need to explain why we're lowering the amount. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just, I mean, yeah, what, just one last option. I mean, I trust you guys completely 
to develop the message. I just, the one thing I want to be wary of, and it happens with, you know, social media, with the listserv, whatever, is there's some very loud people, and we end up presenting our messaging because we're afraid of, you know, how they'll interpret it, instead of developing a messaging to say, like, okay, what about all the people that are just checking the listserv every now and then, don't know what's happening, and could have a great grant, and, and you know, how do we present the information? I just would yeah. love for us to prioritize making it clear for them rather than sort of worrying about some people that are going to complain no matter what right. and, and framing it that's for the advice. wrong people. I think that's good advice. Great point. Right. I mean, right. I just, as a former communications professional and and member of the public, the message in the listserv should be two paragraphs right. and maybe four bullet points. Yeah. And it should start with, here are the initiatives the EDC is taking. We are also inviting grants up to, uh, we are allocating up to $100,000 for grants that meet any of these criteria. And then you have a landing page right. on the website that gives you all the nitty gritty details. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I, I think you're almost, you're overthinking yeah. this a little bit at okay. this point. I think we have good direction. Uh, Deborah and I will, will um, and Rodar, we'll work it out. Yeah, okay. There's one other question about what we announce. Um, and that has to do with, with trying to be clear, and we don't have to do this in the same announcement, by the way, but is trying to be clear about um, whether business, whether for-profit businesses, how, what, what, how would we, how are we serving, how should for-profit businesses look at the community grants process, I guess is the way to put it. And so last year, we, whether we explained this well or poorly, we did explain it. Maybe we explained it poorly, maybe people didn't listen, some combination of both. But the, there were a number of proposals from businesses to basically, please give me money to expand my business. Expanding my business is economic development. That's true at one level and wasn't persuasive to most of us at another level. The, in response to that, the, I think many of us, some of us at least, feel that a revolving loan fund is a more appropriate tool that more people would support the concept of a revolving loan fund for for-profit businesses. Yes. And, and so the question is whether in our, in our communication, and actually whether it's in our communication or not, in our process, <laughs> whether or not we inform and explain to businesses what we would like them to do. This is really a discussion of what would we like them to do, not whether we explain anything. What I think we would like businesses to do is to, if there are, is to do the following, not restrict them from applying for a community grant, but if they are to get a community grant, that their proposal needs to have an explicit community benefit. That in other words, providing a grant to a company to grow its business is not a community grant. Providing a grant to a company to build a bathroom that the public can access that will help grow its business. It, the, the helping to grow its business is a fantastic afterthought. We, it's perfectly appropriate to give a grant to create a community bathroom. So are you suggesting that child care businesses will not be profitable? Uh, the childcare businesses aren't, aren't for profit. None of them are for profit. No, and they have profit. an explicit community. And, and they have ex explicit community benefit, right? Which is a kid, even if they were for profit. If a pro for profit childcare company said, came in and said, we, we've got 60 spaces for kids, mm -hmm. I, I would give them, you know, I mean, if it was a good proposal, we'd give them a grant. Okay. So, so, in other words, we're not saying that business, what I would like to say is that we're not preventing businesses from proposing things in the community grant program, but that. If they do, that what we would grant it on is, is the community benefit, not, not the benefit for growth. However, or, or if what you'd like is funding to help you grow your business, that is economic development. That's why we're trying to establish a loan fund, a revolving loan fund. And, we, and the criteria for a revolving loan fund is, are you a Woodstock business? And will the, will the loan help you to finance the growth of your business? And so that's the vehicle for businesses. We're supporting you. We're just supporting you with something with a different, with a, vehicle. A different vehicle. That you know. And now the challenge is that we don't yet know for sure that we're going to have a community loan, a revolving loan fund. 
So we, we, we have to say that. We, we're all in favor of it if, it, if, if we define it, if we can get comfortable with the details. And do we throw Startup Woodstock in another way that... Startup Woodstock is really a, a private... Okay. It, it, that's a private initiative, really. So that we fund, you know, we gave a grant to. So I think we don't have control over that. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm biased because I'm part of Startup Woodstock, but I, unless any, I'll recuse myself and not part of the discussion if you want. But, but in any event, so, so that's the question of, of whether or not we provide any of this guidance and so forth to businesses. Uh, Mika. Um. Can, I, I'm feeling sort of out of the loop with where we're at on the revolving loan funds. Could I get a, a short update on, on what is holding us back? It, it, time. We, we just, the work. It, there's, um, it's legal. Yeah. Other communities have done it. Um, many, we, we all talked, maybe you missed this meeting, but we had a, a philosophical discussion among the EDC, either I think at the last meeting or the meeting before that, where we basically said, okay, if these basic operational questions can be worked out, who's going to approve the loans? What are the exact criteria? You know, are there, should there be limits on the amounts or not? Does a bank get involved, et cetera? Is it legal? Assuming we resolve those details, we'd like to do it. Mika, to, to, to probably better shed light on your question, because there was three of us involved with that. Larry, John, and I basically, Larry's been really involved with the childcare thing, and yeah. you know that's been absorbing a lot of his time. I've been involved with the foliage business right now, and been kind of taking up all of my time. And John is involved with forty different things all the time. So you know, it's just right. it's just a question. Like John said, it's a question of time. I uh, got you. Okay. I, but we're excited yeah. about it, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and sure. it'll, it'll probably happen. Well, hopefully it'll happen. Larry, okay. do, you, do you want to say? Yeah. Larry? People that are behind the, the uh, loan program up in Bradford on, I think it's November 21st, to uh, really figure yeah. out the nitty gritty. And then I think uh, once we get that, He's we are going to go and talk to uh, uh, an attorney that's been involved in that sort of thing, to, so that we just get, there's just a lot of details to it, but I, I think the concept is pretty solid. Yeah. Sorry, I, I don't mean to sound like I'm criticizing anything. I just know that I had missed a meeting and and yeah. I was kind of foggy during COVID and all the things. So I'm just checking to see if I missed something. I think realistically speaking, we would announce if we were successful, I think there will be there's preparatory work to do that's quite detailed. And then there's discussions at the EDC and publicly that where we'll all want to make sure that the details are in fact going to be legitimate. We're going to be writing checks to businesses. You know what I mean? So I'm guessing that we could that, that we could introduce this program this summer. That's exciting. That's but really it, exciting. but I think the question for us now is: Should we mention this possible? You know, are, are people? I I don't want to. I, I'm not proposing that we that we set a rule that says if you are a for-profit business, you can or you cannot apply for the community grant. Anybody can apply for a community grant. But I would sort of offer some guidance that says this is at least how I'm thinking about it. If, if I'd like to turn that into a, this is how we're thinking about it, if if you agree I that do. we're thinking that this is the vehicle. Just so you know, we think it's going to be coming. We can't guarantee it, but we're all in generally in support of it. We hope to introduce it this summer. For the people involved, John, Joe, Larry, um, what do you think the percentage, you know, if you have to rate it on a scale of one to 10 in terms of how likely it is to be approved and, and come forward, what would you give it? I mean, how, how likely is this program will come to fruition? Is, yeah. Is, I, I give it a 10. You would? Sure. Larry. Larry, John. I think it's going to happen. You do? Yeah, I, I, I give it a. Yeah, an eight and a half or a nine. I think we could get tripped okay. up, but other towns have done it, so. Then I think we can talk about it. Yeah. yeah. I think we can talk about it and present it as an option. Yeah. With the caveat that it's not yet approved. So Roger. I have a couple of observations. First on the loan fund, my personal opinion, and I know you can't quite say this, but assume it's a done deal and essentially start communicating them like it's a done deal because other people have done it. Woodstock can do it. I mean, sure. it's it's a possibility. You you know, it's, nothing is going to derail it besides somebody stealing all the money or something. Well, no, no, I tell you, there is one thing that could derail it. 
which is we could we could if we're really successful we could run out of money. Okay, so that's that's yeah. That's so a great reason to derail it. To, but yeah, I'm just saying that we're out of money. We can't. We don't have any money to loan. Right. Well, I've been mean, announcing a loan fund and then announcing that we don't have any money for it is probably. <laughs> we'll probably get a few comments on the list there about that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean we would have money in the future, but yeah. But okay, anyways, so go on, ahead. On the giving grants to, to private businesses, my impression from the last round, and and this could be, wrong, was very almost none were given, um, and. I don't want to say it was a bait and switch, but I think for very good reasons, there were questions about each one of them. And those questions revolved less around whether there was public good in it, because that's going to be extraordinarily nebulous to define, but whether or not the businesses that were applying would have gone ahead and spent the money anyway. So this was not vital to their expansion, but, but something that that, you know, I want to buy more e-bikes, you were going to buy more e-bikes. So, um, you know, and I, I shouldn't use that as an example, but um, so I would, I, I think you need to have a, almost a, an executive session discussion about whether you really ever are going to grant money to individual businesses. Because my impression has been that most of the, the grants do not do not pay, do, do not ultimately get funded. So, so here's why, right, here's why the wording of that possible policy, community grants are not available to for-profit businesses, doesn't work. Right? Um, Yankee Bookstore, is that the name of it? Yeah. Yes. That shows how many books I read. Although I do buy all of the books I do read, I buy at the Yankee <laughs> yeah, Bookstore. So do I, I just bought one of his. I don't buy very many books. Yeah. The Yankee Bookstore decides that they want to sponsor a jazz concert uh, on the green. Free jazz concert for the community. And they come to us, for-profit entity, comes to us for a community grant to sponsor a jazz concert because they want to build, they think they want to build their customers and they, they're going to stand up and the benefit to them is they stand up and say, this is the Yankee Bookstop jazz concert. I mean, it, I, leave, let's assume yeah, that the yeah. jazz concert is a great thing. Yeah. Well, just because, they're, just because they're a for-profit business, and they have a great idea that benefits the community. We shouldn't give them a grant. Sorry, you have to. So the problem is we can't. Giving grants based on who the person is is tricky. And, and no, absolutely. And I, I, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily saying that I think you should say nothing to, to for-profits. Um, but I think it needs to be crystal clear in the that yes okay this is even even almost posing hypotheticals yeah, for right. people well, it's well, like I, I use that's the, that's a perfectly good i use the example of the public bathroom because we actually got a proposal yeah. for yeah. something close to that yeah and i we would have and had they had they done it had they proposed in, in fact the public bathroom i think we yeah. would have given them the money that we talked about yeah. that so okay so i think you I know just, from, from my perspective Roger, clear. yeah from my perspective, Roger, if I ever, if this happens, if it comes to fruition, and I happen to be on the committee that you know says yes or no or whatever, that portion of it I will have a lot of trouble with. I'm going to be struggling with, you know, is it because it's a tough call? Is it going to be a benefit the community or not, or is it too much of a private enterprise? I, I will probably have to give that a lot of thought, and that's one of the issues I'll probably. Have to yeah, because a place to buy jeans would be a benefit. To no, no, I don't know. know if it's a viable business. Okay, so, so maybe, so, yeah, I, I guess the way I think about it is, is that if something is a good business idea, it doesn't need, a, it might need a loan, but it doesn't deserve a grant. Yeah. And so any, so if, but if, if a for-profit business wants to do something that a not-for-profit business might want to do, like build a public bathroom or sponsor a jazz concert, then we ought to give it that we ought to consider them independent of the fact that it's who they Absolutely. are. Absolutely. And right. I, I agree in that case. Right. That, that's just you. you uh, that, oh, yeah. Sorry. All right. No, it's okay. Well, hold on. Deborah first and then Patrick. Oh, no, no. This is like oh, a, a, a definite hand raised. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Susie. I'll get to you. Deborah, Patrick. I, I think the wording needs to be, and I hear what you're saying, Roger. I think the wording needs to be something along uh, is a public benefit. Um, uh, wait. Uh, public service or is a public benefit. 
you know, the, uh, now I'm wondering if I got the words wrong. Uh, but yeah, that it's a public service for the community, not just a benefit, it's a service. So it's something that is, yes, it may help their business, but has something else that happens that is outside of their business that benefits. Well, there's nothing bad about it. The way I put it, sorry, sorry, let me let you guys talk. So Patrick and then Susan. Sorry, but the, the thing that, like great, great genes for everybody, that's great, but then that's a benefit, but it's not a service. You know what I mean? It's not a public service. I'm gonna make it even more confusing because John's example, I think, is a perfect example of why it's confusing. If somebody wanted to do a gas concert, you, uh, then because for the community, why would the EDC fund it? Well, because it's an event. It's because it might. But but it, but it's not. It's, right. it's an event to support that business. You know, they want to say they're the sponsor, but it doesn't make any sense. Well, we you sponsored. Know, we gave a grant to TEDx, and they were sponsors for TEDx. And it wasn't just. It wasn't. It would be one thing if they just want to put their name on it, right? Mm -hmm. They're exactly. saying that they're working it and they're organizing it and they're putting. You know, that that's different than I'm just. That's, that's different than I want to sponsor it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Patrick, in that vein, in that vein, the consignment store downtown uh, arranged for a jazz performance, I think every Saturday afternoon. And he went around and got separate donations from the local business to pay for that. He didn't come to us for a grant. So, right. see what I'm saying? I, I, I agree with that. I'm agreeing with you, John. Yeah. Right. I, it's very pleasant. I think it's going to have to look at this as a case by case study. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, Susie and then Michael. Did I skip? Am I missing someone? No, okay. Susie and then Michael. So I think um, this is vaguely reminiscent of like staring down the pandemic, but we are staring down higher gas prices. We are staring down potentially layoffs because there's layoffs coming, recession. Lots of really ugly stuff. So I think that part of your money should be almost a, a fund to help businesses stay afloat if things get tough. Well, we've cons we've executed that in the past, mm -hmm. and I feel like we have. Well, at the moment, even with the things that are on the plate, we would have funds available of the same magnitude as we gave out the last time in. You know, to, to, to have that in reserve. Yeah. I, and now with that, we could, we did that based on your based on your suggestions, Susie. So you should be congratulated for that. Wait, wait, no, but you scared me when you said well, we might not have money for successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We give away all the money, so I just want to make sure that there is kind of a. Well, we'll have. Uh, yeah, I I think we have to. That's always a a choice a business has as to how much to invest and how much to save. You know, so. I think we'll be making that choice on an ongoing basis. I don't think we have to make it right this moment, I guess is my point. Uh, Michael? Yeah, hi, I'm just thinking, yeah, I think Roger's exactly right. Like, I really feel like we need to hone our language down for the, for the private businesses because I think we're gonna get a bunch of angry people like we did this past year because I don't, you know, it has to be very clear. I just, it's fear doing a repeat every year of this where the businesses can come up and say, oh, well, this is a community service. If I provide e-bikes, that's a public service because then people can do X, Y, and Z and tour around town. And, I mean, I'm, and I'm happy to work on this with anyone. But I really think we need some very, very clear language if, if we're going to allow um, private businesses to apply. Okay, so, so we definitely need clear language. I agree. Oh, sorry, Marion, go ahead. Well, I, I know we talked, I mean, we talked about this, right? We talked about it when we went through the grants. And I think one of the, one of the ways that I found useful to think about it was not wanting to uh, approve a grant that would provide an, a disparate benefit to one business over another. So if it benefited the entire business community, like childcare or housing or something like that, then we would support it. But if it, if it gave an, you know, a sort of an, what was perceived as an unfair advantage to, to one business. For example, like, you know, well, one business is paying for the jazz concert and getting the benefit and the other is getting it free from us and that seems seems unfair. But if it's something that is sort of spread yeah. among. Okay, well, I think that, look, um, Michael, did you, your hand is still up. Do you want to comment or you're okay? Okay, all right. So yeah. I, I think we all agree that we need to be very clear 
I, is it fair to say that we're not yet very clear? Yes. And so therefore announcing on that some, one issue. On that one issue. Yes. So announcing anything on that issue would probably be a mistake. Yes. So we won't announce anything on that issue. I, I think maybe what we could do, which is clear, which creates what we could do without creating confusion is to say, by the way, we will be creating, we will likely be creating a revolving loan fund that will be available this summer and it will be specifically targeted for businesses to help them expand. And then that, that's it. And if someone wants to call and say, well, wait a minute, did you buy that? Did you mean we shouldn't apply? We would say, well, you are allowed, to, then we could have a verbal conversation with them and explain the lack of clarity until we're clear. So, I, ah. in other words, we can't, I mean, it's eight o'clock, basically. We, we need you to announce the to watch all the videos from our negotiations right. from last year. So I think this is a topic for us to continue. Um, and I also think, by the way, that if we have this discussion at our next meeting, and we can, clar and I think we can, some of us can propose some language and, and frameworks, language that we could use to be clear. Um, uh, if we if we announce this in, in middle of December, which is halfway through the grant process, I think we can avoid, you know, avoid most people getting angry. I think they were upset perhaps because they found out in the meet, or we all found out in the meeting how we felt. We didn't really know until the meeting happened. And this time, at least, we can announce it in the middle of December, in advance of people, you know, finishing their applications. So, I think that's the best we can do. I, otherwise, we need to stay here tonight until we're clear. So. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm sorry to disagree, but I, I don't think that's fair to applicants. If somebody says, based on the last several years where there were all these grants that were either given or proposed by individual businesses, and I'm going to spend some time doing something, and then two months, two weeks into that process, you say, we're kind of not, we're, we're kind of ruling you out with, out of our criteria. I don't. I think that's going to, I think you need to decide this quickly. And I don't, I agree, you can't do it at this meeting. Right. Um, I would be happy to work on, on a quick language with somebody. I, I don't think this is a language issue. I think this is actually a substance it's a decision. issue. And we need to, find, yeah. We yeah. need to find the language. I would say that, that if anyone has been paying attention in the past, they're not going to start doing an application. They're going to assume that we don't give grants to businesses because right. they, went through the, they went through the last thing, which yeah. is fine with me if they assume that because. Yeah. For the moment, because they, you know, because we're going to establish a loan fund, which they can. So, I mean, I'd rather it. I'd rather we were clear tonight, but I don't think people will say, "Well, based on the past, we apply." No, no I mean, you're based on the past, you, you wouldn't apply. Yeah. Because we, I mean, we had five or six different. We actually set. If you, if you watch the video of the meetings, I mean, you guys probably saw some of them or maybe all of them. You'd have a very clear sense that this was. A judgment call, a case by case thing. You you'd know what we were debating. You'd understand it. Um, so I think it's sort of the best we can do. I mean, I take your point that as fast as we can do it, but you know, we live in the real world, so it's okay. Are there any other? So I think Deborah and I we have our instructions, right? Deborah, are you comfortable with this? We'll announce this on November tenth ish, and we'll give people two months. January tenth will be the or whatever a weekday will you know it will be, and then we'll work soon to schedule to kind of block out the days in the end of January and we'll figure out when the select board probably meets. The select board meets every two weeks, so by mid-February we can get we can get the grants approved. Okay, any other business? Adjourn. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Deborah, now you're raising two hands. You seem to be overcompensating. <laughs> the early thing. Any opposed? All right, we are adjourned. Thanks everybody. Good discussion.